Official Detective, dedicated to the men who guard your safety and protect your home, your police department. Official Detective, presented in cooperation with Official Detective Stories magazine and starring Craig McDonald as Detective Lieutenant Dan Britt. But first, a word from the Ford dealers of America. Ford's won it again, the New York Fashion Academy Award as America's Fashion Car of the Year. Listen to what Mrs. Eric McCabe of Houston, Texas, one of the more than 190,000 happy owners, said about her 1954. As a busy housewife, I especially appreciate the ease with which I can handle our 1954 in traffic. It's such a pleasure to drive, and all my friends admire the beauty and style, and, as well as the added comforts of my 54. Our doors close so solidly, and the motor is so quiet, I always feel like I'm in a much more expensive car. Our 54 rates tops for the whole family. Comments like that are heard every day by Ford dealers. But prove for yourself that the new 1950 Ford is the one truly fine car in its field. Your nearest Ford dealer is in the classified phone book. Call him tomorrow for your test drive in the new 1950 Ford. Feel its comfort. Hear the purr of its mighty V8 or 95 horsepower 6. See its many big car features. See, hear, and feel the difference yourself. Test drive the new 1950 Ford tomorrow. Lieutenant Dan Britt, headquarters. If there's anything the criminal hates more than a cop, it's an informer. But the squealer takes his chances. On one side of the scales is the money he'll receive for his information. On the other, his life. Go on, Pete. Pick it up. No, thanks. You sound like you mean it. I do, Manny. Ah, uh, what's the matter, Pete? I never yet met a guy that turned his nose up at a hundred thousand bucks. You know what's the matter? No. We copped five hundred grand on that job, Chris. Five hundred G's. It was supposed to be a three-way split. And a hundred grand ain't one third of five. The way I figure it is. Well, you figure wrong. Now, listen, and get this straight, Pete. For your part in the act, you get a hundred G's. The rest goes to me and Manny. A hundred grand, Pete. Now, pick it up. Where's the rest? I told you, me and Manny. Right, Manny? Right. <laughs> you see? Manny ain't squawking. But I am. I thought it was supposed to be a three-way split, Chris. You thought wrong. Yeah. I think I'm going to take this line down. I don't know what you mean by that, Pete, but if you start any trouble, I'll lay you flat on your back. Right, Manny? Right. Uh, but you said... I you... don't care what I said. Now, look, Pete. You want it straight, I'll give it to you straight. Uh, do that. Manny and me pull that heist. No thanks to you. What do you mean? Just what I said. You were just a lookout. It was Manny and me went in the currency exchange. It was Manny and me did the dirty work. We shot up the guard. We took the risks. I still say knocking off that guard wasn't smart. Point is, we had to. It was him or us. So all in all, Pete, me and Manny figure we did most of the work. And that's why we're taking a bigger split. You ought to feel glad we're letting you have even a hundred grand of it. Now take it. Or leave it. Uh Okay. I'll take it. Smart. But I don't like it. Tough. I'll see you guys later. Where are you going? Out. Manny. Huh? I don't like his attitude. Tell him. See where he goes. Sure. <laughs> I got it, Joe. Lieutenant Britt. Hello, Lieutenant. Wendy Clark. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Not bad. You? Oh, working as usual. Anything new on that currency exchange robbery? Not a thing. 
The guard died in the hospital. I suppose you know that. Yes, I heard. Uh, look, Lieutenant, if you do get a lead, will you give me a break on it? You know you're my favorite reporter. Thanks, Lieutenant. Right, Wendy. Wendy Clark? Yeah, nice kid. Well, I suppose you was asking about the exchange robbery. And so is the commissioner. Well, we know as much now as we knew two days ago, which isn't much. Something will break, Joe. It's got to. Uh, I'm the guy that called you on the phone. I figured this place was good as any to meet. It's not exactly high class, but I've been here before. Now, listen, I... Here, what do you have? Uh, Another coffee. Beer and coffee. What's your name? Call me Pete. Pete what? Just Pete. Can I trust you? I've come this far without getting you into trouble. Now, what's all the mystery about? Pete. That uh, currency exchange job the other day. What about it? I um, I hear they're offering 25 G's reward. That's right. Uh, I um, I'd like to get that dough. Oh, easy enough. You can lead the police to the people responsible for the guard's death. I can't. You kidding? No, no, I ain't kidding. Who did it? Not so fast. Not so fast. Oh, there's some strings attached. Yeah. A few. All right. I'm listening. Um, here's the pitch, kid. I'll make it short and plain. I, um... I had something to do with that heist. You were in on it? In a way. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't no killer. I didn't bump that guard. I was against it from the start. No doubt. Go on. Here's my angle. If I start talking to the law, I put my own neck in the noose. I don't see how you can avoid it. I know, I know. I ain't arguing that one. But I don't want that noose tightened up. Know what I mean? No. And I don't see where I fit into this either. Look, Miss Clark. You got a good rep in this town as a police reporter and a person. The cops like you. They trust you. Guys like me, we like you too. You ain't never crossed any of us yet. Never mind the flattery. Now, um, you got influence with the law. Now, wait a minute. You want me to speak in your behalf. If you turn in the rest of the crowd, you want to be sure of leniency from the court. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. You got it. And another thing, the reward. I want a guarantee on that. Maybe they'll send me up, but I want a guarantee on that reward. 25 G's. What do you say, Miss Clark? Think you can swing it? I don't know. Lisa and I get along, but I'm not sure we get along that well. Look, kid. You got nothing to lose. Everything to gain. The story, the exclusive, probably a raise. Why, why, I, I didn't give you part of the reward if you want. No, that's not necessary. Well? I, uh, I'll see what I can do, but don't count on anything. Oh, thanks, kid. Uh, meet me at the office tonight, uh, and I'll... Office? Oh, no, nothing doing. It's too risky. Well, all right. Here's my home address. Uh, Come up about eight. Uh, uh, I'll let you know what happens. Good. Uh, look, Miss Clark, don't cross me, will you? I'm dealing with you because you got a good rep and I think I can trust you. Don't let me down, will you, kid? I won't let you down. Well, it's good to see you, Wendy. Sit down. Thanks, Lieutenant. Now, what's on your mind? The currency exchange robbery. <laughs> I told you earlier today we have nothing new on it. But I have. What do you mean? I talked to somebody a little while ago. Somebody closely connected with the man who pulled the robbery and shot the guard. Who? He didn't tell me his name. You mean you talked to him, saw him, got information from him, and you don't know who he is? That's it. Look, Wendy, what's this all about? I have... No, hold on, Lieutenant. Hold on. Don't hit the ceiling. It's one of those deals, that's all. What deals? This person was in on the robbery. Now, I don't know how much he had to do with it, but he was there. Now, the point is, he wants to turn informer, but he wants a deal. From the DA? Right. Now, I don't know the district attorney that well, and you do. You think you can talk him into something? I doubt it. Well, you can try. Maybe. This 
certain party wants a good slice of leniency and a guarantee on the $25,000 reward. He's not asking much, is he? Well, sure, it's a big price, but look what he's giving in return. The people who pulled the job, killed the guards, and possibly most of the money. Uh Uh-huh. Now, what's his name? The guy you spoke to? I told you I don't know. Come on, Wendy. He put his trust in me. He didn't have to. The least I can do is play ball with him. What about me? If you play ball with us, you can crack this case. Nothing to lose, and everything to gain. You've got me on a spot. Oh, what do you say, Lieutenant? Will you go along? I'll see what I can do. But I can't promise anything. Well, and, uh, Lieutenant... Yeah? Don't have me shagged, huh? Just trust me. If I didn't trust you, I'd have you locked up. <laughs> <laughs> now, get out of here, Wendy. I've got work to do. With the D.A. <laughs> Hello, Manny. Where you been all afternoon? Failing Pete, like you asked me to. He's up to trouble, Chris. Yeah? Well, spill it. Well, first he goes to Casey's Tavern over on Carver's. Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. Get to the point. Well, he meets a dame. Good-looking dame, too. Talks to her. About what? I don't know. I couldn't get near enough to hear him without him seeing me. But I asked around, see? Who do you think the dame is? Come on, Manny. Wendy Clark. Crime reporter in the trip. That's... Double-crossing punk. Oh, that ain't all. He's up there now. Up where? That dame's place over on 32nd Street. I tailed him. Went up about 15 minutes ago, 8 o'clock. That punk figures to cross us. I can see that much. Come on, Manny. Where to? The dame's apartment. And bring your rod. More than 190,000 happy owners agree it makes sense to drive the 1950 Ford before you buy any car at any price. And your local Ford dealer invites you to test drive this great new car in your own way. Get behind the wheel of the new Ford, which again for 50 has won the Fashion Academy Award as America's fashion car of the year. Thrill to the instant response of the mighty Ford engine. Take this 50 Ford into traffic. And notice how completely easy it is to handle. Then to the open road and feel the big car stability, the solid comfort of Ford's famous midship ride. Then glide to a smooth, even stop with Ford's king-size brakes. You'll agree in every way here is the one truly fine car in its field. So call your nearest Ford dealer tomorrow. He'll arrange a test drive in the new 100-horsepower V8 or the 95-horsepower 6. See, hear, and feel the difference. Test drive the new 1954. Toss a match, Joe. Sure thing. Thanks. So, the DA is going to play, huh? Yeah, he said he would. How far? If we nab the killers, and if this guy of Wendy's is telling the truth about how much he had to do with the robbery... Then the DA is willing to ask the court for leniency. What about the reward? The company said they're willing to pay it. Hmm. You told Wendy? Yeah. Phoned her about an hour ago. Yeah. It's 8.30 now. Why don't you get back to us? Sometime tonight. Yeah. I hope it pans out. You and me both. But if you ask me, Wendy's the one who deserves the reward. Yeah. Match, Joe. I just gave you one. It didn't take. <laughs> What did you do? Went back to the place. On Cressy Street? Yeah. Is the money's there now? Yeah. Four hundred grand. Is it uh, in a bag or something? Chris's suitcase. Including your hundred thousand? Uh-huh. Only why I trust him with it, I don't know. You'd better stop worrying about it. Money will have to go back to the exchange. All of it. But but you say four hundred thousand. I thought it was five. No, we only got four. I think Anything we else you want to know? Got it all. As soon as I arrange these notes, we'll run down to headquarters. Then I'll get the story over to the papers. Think this will work out? Why shouldn't it? I mean the DA. He won't cross me, will he? <laughs> Don't worry so much. Oh, excuse me. 
Yes? Back up, sister. Wait, wait a minute. Back up. What's this all about? Shut up. There he is, Chris. Chris, Chris, listen. I can, I mean, listen. You you... punk. You dirty, lousy punk. Chris, don't. I swear, Chris, I didn't. Shut up. Bring the girl over here, Manny. Move, sister. I'd still like to know what this is all about. And I'd like to know what Pete told you. I didn't tell her nothing, Chris. I swear I did. How many times I got to tell you? Take a look at this. What? His papers. (laughs) Interesting, huh? Let me see. Yeah, you've been working hard, haven't you, sweetheart? I always work hard. Two copies, too. Oh, well, the whole inside story here on paper. Manny's name, my name. Even Pete's part in it. How we pulled off the job, where the dough is, everything. Nice, sweetheart. Very nice. Thanks for the compliment. But it'll never see the front page. Right, Manny? Right. Chris. Chris, I didn't tell her nothing. I swear, Chris, I don't... You lousy crossing punk. Chris, wait! What's the name, Chris? Get away from that door. I'm telling you... Too bad. She wasn't a bad-looking kid. There's the fireplace, Manny. Burn these two copies. Sure. Some was grand this place. Oh, you're forgetting something. That hundred grand we gave Pete is in his pocket. Get it. <laughs> you can't use it now. Mort wagon's on the way, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. Emmy said he'd have the slugs for as soon as possible. Okay, Joe. Ah, oh, snap out of it, Lieutenant. Come on now. She was a fine girl, Joe. Yeah, I know. I'll get the punk who did this. Sure. Print boys are working, but I doubt if they'll get anything. Make them try hard. The guy's name is Raiden. Pete Raiden. Don't know him. A couple of things in our files, but not much. Small time crook. I wish I knew the names of the rest of the mob. I wonder if he told Wendy anything about this. Hard to say, but he probably had. That's why she got it. Want to take a look around? You go ahead. I'll go back to headquarters. If you find anything, let me know. Check. <laughs> How many times do I have to call? I heard you. Start packing. Packing what? Our clothes. What do you think? We're going to blow this town. Now snap it. Sure. Come in, Joe. Well, we went over the apartment. Didn't find much. Anything at all? Yeah. Evidently, Wendy had written the whole story in outline. How do you know? We found some charred papers in the fireplace. Most of it wasn't legible, but there was enough to tell us what it was about. She had made an original and one copy. Got it all on one page. So he's probably found them, burned them. How much of the story was readable? Not enough. No names except Pete Radens. No addresses. Uh-huh. An original and a copy, you said? Yeah, why? Come on, Joe. Let's take another look at that apartment. How you doing? Okay. Got any more shirts to go in here? Yeah, one or two. By the way, where are we headed? I figure on Florida. <laughs> now that sounds great. It's nice and warm down there. I'll get it. Yeah? Your name Marvin? Chris Marvin? Yeah, why? I'd like to talk to you. Sorry, fella. I haven't got time. I'm sorry, too, but I'd like to talk to you. For sure. What do you want? I want you, Marvin. And this guy here. Name's Manny Klinger, right? So what? So you're both under arrest. Listen, I don't get this. What are you trying Name's to... Name's Britt, Marvin. Lieutenant Britt. Cop? Yeah. You got a warrant? Search and arrest. What are you searching for? Number one, a bag. A bag that should contain 
Two a gun, caliber thirty eight. We got no five hundred G's. I'll take a look anyway. If you don't mind. And we got no gun either, copper. Sorry, I can't take your word on it. Now let's look around. Wait a minute. Yeah? What's the charge? Two charges. One robbery. Currency exchange a few days ago. Two murder. Triple murder. The exchange guard, Pete Raiden, and Wendy Clark. I don't know anything about any of that. Cut it, Marvin. I know the whole story. Yeah, who told it to you? Wendy Clark. <laughs> Wendy Clark? No. She didn't come back to life, Marvin. But before she died, she wrote the whole thing down on paper, as Pete gave it to her. Everything about the robbery, where the money is, who shot the guard. Everything. Nuts. Don't get cocky, Marvin. Sure, you think you're in the clear because you burned those two copies of the outline she wrote. You did a good job, too. But you forgot something. Yeah? There were two copies, all nice and neat. But two copies mean carbon paper. That's what you forgot to burn, Marvin. Wendy used a fresh carbon on that story. All we had to do was hold it up to a mirror and read it. See it now? So what? Just because it's That's only said... part of the evidence. The rest will back it up. When I find the gun and the bag with the money, you won't have a leg to stand on in court. I guess not. And don't try a break, Marvin. That goes for you, too, Clinger. I've got a bunch of boys with me. They're outside in the hall. You two step outside to take you in. Sure, just let me change my car. Don't reach for a gun, Marvin. I only... Do I have to tell you twice? No. No, you don't have to. Everything okay, Lieutenant? Fine, Joe. Clean these two characters. We'll take them in. You have just heard Official Detective, tense dramatic stories of criminal investigation starring Craig McDonald as Detective Lieutenant Dan Britt. Here's important news for truck owners. Ford truck prices have just been reduced. Yes, price reductions up to $80. We're talking about Ford bonus-built trucks for 1950, the trucks that have scored greater sales gains than all other makes combined. These new price reductions more than ever make Ford America's number one truck value. 21 smart truck advancements for 1950 include new models that expand Ford's line to over 175 models, new power suspension, new features that give more performance at less cost. Smart truck buyers who are switching to Ford now get even greater savings with these new price reductions. Remember, Ford trucks cost less because Ford trucks last longer. Latest available registrations prove it. Why not see your Ford dealer tomorrow? <music> official Detective is presented in cooperation with Official Detective Stories magazine. If you've enjoyed tonight's story, you will find many more stories of equal appeal in our February issue, now on sale at your newsstand. Sergeant Joe Allen was played by Lawson Zerby, and Chris was Joe DeSantis. Wendy was played by Margaret Draper, Pete was Milton Herman, and Manny was Sandy Strauss. Official Detective is produced and directed by Wynn Wright, written by William K. Wells, Jr., with special music by Chet Kingsbury. All names of persons and places used in this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to names of actual persons, living or dead, is coincidental. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>